You've seen gameplay footage of the upcoming Night Ops update and taken a peek at the toys we'll soon get to use. But the day-night cycle and its related gear are only the headline features of Update 0.2. It's what's under the hood of this massive upgrade, however, that might have me most excited. Let's talk about the new features, mechanics, and quality of life improvements. From new missions, six new guns and high-tier loot, to improved heli wait times, new POIs, gameplay mechanics, and improved key spawns, Update 0.2 should relieve many of your concerns and give you reasons to grind again for another 100 plus hours. After reviewing all the details, I think Night Ops is going to be a game changer. Let's dive in. Thanks for watching the video. I'm Boomer. I'm old and just trying to compete in online shooters. I'm also a Grey Zone Warfare community leader, which means I get direct access to the company through a private Discord channel and monthly meetings. We're going to start with uh, you, Boomer. In the build-up to the release of its first major update set for later this year, Madfinger Games has started to share sneak peeks at what's to come, a lot of which are based on your feedback. So, let's start with the Little Bird system. If you've spent any time playing GZW, you've probably had to wait for a lift, whether it was to head out on a mission or to return to base. Luckily, the helicopter mechanics have been overhauled to streamline travel across LeMay. Little birds now spawn and despawn closer to the map's edge, reducing the time you spend waiting for transport. Instead of originating from distant fobs, helicopters now start their journey from off-map locations to the closest LZs, slashing transit times. Devs also repositioned some old LZs to optimize travel routes and added even more LZs to help mitigate camping. Additionally, they optimized flight paths by adjusting speeds and introducing new splines that provide direct routes. These refined flight paths means helicopters travel quicker and more predictably between locations. To help you plan your moves more effectively, a new widget was added that tracks flight times and that provides a clear understanding of arrival and departure schedules. One of the most enticing features about extraction shooters is that rush you get when you find something valuable during a raid. The tension on route to extraction tickles just the right part of our brains. Soon, GZW will include rare and high tier loot. The devs said they've made this new loot hard to find. They want you to work for it, to explore the map, venture to new POIs. They want to provide more variety and depth and enhance the urgency of loot runs, all the while allowing you to experiment with different strategies. As company CEO Mark Robbins has said, they're creating the sandbox, and new ways to unlock areas of that sandbox are on the way. To fully progress through the game's tasking system, you need keys. I have 167 hours in the game, no joke, and I still don't have my hands on the Blue Lagoon restaurant storage room key. Say that three times fast. My odds of getting it and yours, however, are about to go up. Key spawns have been significantly improved. Essential keys will now appear in logical and contextually relevant locations, making them easier to find and less reliant on a random fallen enemy. This fix will make task progression smoother, as will a rework of how you physically loot keys and other treasure. The physical act of looting in the game was improved. You can now directly loot backpacks, rigs, and containers from the ground, eliminating the need to equip the item before searching through its inventory. This allows you to quickly gather essential gear and resources while scavenging the environment. You can also scan new info when looting fallen enemies. Looting bodies has been enhanced so you can now view the injuries of dead players, gaining insights into how they died and what injuries they suffered. Additionally, you can check the inventory of comatose players and use your teammates' medical items to heal them. The updated health and death screen now displays bullet trajectories, showing exactly where shots hit you and the path the bullets travel. This feature provides a clear breakdown of shot origins and impact points. By visualizing bullet paths, you gain a better understanding of enemy positions and attack angles, allowing you to adjust your tactics, avoid repeated mistakes, and improve your situational awareness. Tasks in Grey Zone Warfare are also getting revamped. Essential items may now be relocated, and with the introduction of nighttime play, you can choose to tackle missions under the cover of darkness 
or daylight, depending on the tactical advantages of each. Devs are also introducing more than 20 new tasks, some specifically designed for the night, and that will allow you to explore different aspects of the game and adapt your approach based on the time of day. New quest icons help you quickly identify and prioritize tasks, improving navigation, planning, and decision making. They also highlighted required items and potential consequences. There will be new negative consequences for failed decision-making quests, including potential reputation loss, which adds a layer of risk and impact to your choices. In a game that allows team killing, even if accidental, communication is key. To bolster coordination, the devs are introducing new emotes in a faction messenger system. The new emotes facilitate quick, expressive communication allowing you to signal intentions without needing to type out messages. An upgrade to the faction messenger system enhances team communication, allowing you to request support, alert others of PvP hotspots, and coordinate more effectively. They're also adding distinct faction shoulder patches. This feature helps you to quickly identify friends and foes, reducing accidental team killing while preserving the game's hardcore nature. Finally, we'll have an in-game reporting system and an improved social interactions UI. The reporting system allows you to easily flag bad behavior and cheaters, and the revamped interactions UI simplifies how you manage and navigate your in-game relationships, whether that be friends, allies, or rivals, making it easier to collaborate, form strategies, and stay connected. With update 0.2, you'll be able to hold weapons without a magazine, allowing you to use the last bullet in the chamber or to pick up weapons that had been dropped without a magazine. As for movement, they've added diagonal sprinting and toggle options for aim and lean, helping the less nimbled fingered of us. You can also now prone lean. Back at your locker, you'll have the chance to expand your capacity as you progress through tasks, allowing you to store more loot and gear. This expansion will match the space provided by the version you purchased, not add extra spaces beyond that. For example, if you own the Tactical DLC, which provides 10 extra locker lines, you'll unlock that space once you reach rank 30. Devs say they do not plan to exceed the space provided by the Supporter Edition. They're also adding loot cases, cases you can use to store gear more efficiently such as guns, health items, and so forth. Although the map size remains the same at 42 square kilometers, it's now more dense with new POIs. We'll encounter more locations, loot, and enemy AI, and more detailed environmental storytelling throughout the existing locations. This provides plenty more reasons to explore and, I think, variants in how we approach locations. Madfinger Games is expanding the weapon pool with six new guns. We'll get the 1911, MP5, and four new AKs from the Ratnik series, AK-12, 15, 19, and 308, plus the classic AKS-74U. This update also introduces the 45 ACP caliber. In addition to new firearms, they're rebalancing ammunition to ensure the existing weapons remain viable and competitive. This adjustment means that every weapon in your arsenal will have its place. Well there you have it. In addition to the day-night cycle, night vision goggles, flashlights, and lasers, we'll get all that and more with 0.2. And this was just part one of the devlog series. Madfinger plans to release part two soon. Night Ops aims to enhance our experience in LeMang. With the introduction of these new features and improvements, gameplay should be more dynamic, strategic, and immersive. From streamlined travel and enhanced looting to improved communication and expanded weaponry, I can't think of a change I'm not excited about. But what do you think? Are these features enough to entice you back to the game? Are you going to wait for 0.3 in the spring? Either way, if you made it this far into the video, I really appreciate your time. Until next time, have a great day.